hi everyone welcome to another Arturia live stream uh, sorry that we're starting about five or six minutes late we had just a few technical issues with getting cameras to talk to the wide world um, so yeah it's uh, another day of lockdown and hopefully many of you are staying mentally sane and finding time to create some musical rhythms beats recordings uh, apparently the record industry is doing very well with people buying music and streaming music more than ever before uh, so really hoping that uh, you guys and girls are finding some time to make some music as well um, I'm sat in the studio here in London with a rack of guitars behind me and beautiful analog equipment and one of the pieces of equipment that um, I really enjoy playing with a lot is the drum brute impact so I'm just gonna pop the view over to that so you can see what it looks like um, so really the purpose of the workshop is to explain to you the enjoyment of creating beats and rhythms and music using hardware drum machines so like most producers nowadays I have fallen into the the category of looking at the screen all the time. Um, I've got my favorite drum libraries um, that I sort of, if I want to create a beat, I've always just loaded them up. And then I find the frustration of either myself or when I'm working with someone, it's like, man, do you know that we've spent 20 minutes looking for the perfect kick drum and we actually haven't made the beat yet? So for me the real advantage of just having a piece of hardware is that I'm not looking at a screen I'm just looking down and I'm just exploring and having fun and maybe creating beats that uh, that I wouldn't have made before so I'm just gonna quickly run you through what the the drum root impact is uh, I'm not gonna go too feature heavy on the thing I'm mostly just gonna talk about how to make patterns and, and rhythms on it so it is a fully analog drum machine and it's got 12 different instruments on there. Uh, you can see the instruments here, they're organized by channel. So just quickly starting on the left, I'll audition these sounds for you. We start off with a kick drum. Now, this is a real beefy kick drum. Uh, it's analog, it gives you that punch that you don't really get from digital sound sources. Um, each one of these channels is actually very flexible as well that you can manipulate the sound a lot so I can have it kind of like a, a medium decay or a super long decay or nice short snappy and then you've got the pitch as well so you can have it like a kind of high pitch mix that with decay or you can just bring it super low And then obviously you can tweak that in real time as well. So you can go almost do like a bend. So it, it, it's very flexible in the sense that if you just want a short snappy pop drum, you've kind of got it. Or if you want the like a real trap kind of long decayed. See, it's still going on. It goes, it goes on forever. Second instrument snare one um, you've got two snares here snare one and snare two as it's all listed just above there uh, so let's go through the snare one so let's get a nice short snappy kind of sound or open it up with long decay and you can play around with the tone as well So the tone is almost like a, a, a bit of an EQ, just taking, uh, sweeping out the bottom end. Snare 2 does sound very different to snare 1, and we did that for a reason, is that, you know, you can have a lot of um, uh, various uh, things that you can play around with on there, so the snare 1 and snare 2 can complement each other. So let's go through snare 2, short decay, change the tone. So the tone is, uh, is sort of like the woodiness of the drum. Um, then we get to the toms, the high tom and low tom. Now these two actually share a channel. So let's go through the high tom. 
you've got the pitch of that and then to get to the low tom just push the button and that goes to low tom and we'll look at that later so although they share an actual channel they don't share the same uh, step sequences so you can program them very much individually um, then we're going to go over to the symbol and the cowbell which is um, kind of like a nice little touch to include the cowbell I mean everyone knows you can never have enough cowbell um, and it's, it's really got that sort of late 70s early 80s uh, classic analog drum machine cowbell this can't be changed pitch or decay because we've just kept it exactly the way it was uh, originally however with a symbol you can have you can you can have it short as or like an extra hi-hat if you wanted to or just set it to 12 or open it all the way see it's kind of got that sizzle at the end as well so when you've got your hats playing at the end of a measure you can just uh, you know finish it off with a symbol to go into the next part um, then we've got the two hi-hats closed hi-hat and then we've got um, open the hi-hat as well and then lastly we've got an FM drum um, now just coming to the hi-hats as, as with real hi-hats when you're playing drums if you're playing it and then open it and then close it again of course the open hi-hat is then closed there's like a, a choking technique so what we're going to try to do is this okay and then we go over to the FM drum uh, now the FM drum is quite unique on a drum machine and I like it for a few reasons is that you can do like extra synthy percussive sounds with it so you can have it with a very short decay or you can have it as a long so you can create interesting rhythms and patterns with that so create some very interesting sounds with that okay perfect so I'm just gonna play just gonna play a little beat that I made earlier very very quickly and just gonna play around with the the different sounds so you can hear editing the sounds in real time Okay, so that's always a very good place to start is just to hear what you've you've got to work with so and th that's only the very basic point uh, what I'm gonna do now is just show you from scratch how to enter a beat how to enter steps or create your own drum beat and then uh, from there we're going to move into all the clever stuff so it doesn't sound like too much uh, of a machine too mechanical okay so I'm just gonna quickly erase that pattern so we've got absolutely nothing here if I push play there's nothing playing back um, there are a few ways to enter steps with drum ready impact uh, the first way is actually just to punch them in so I've got my kick drum selected and I'm just going to do a 4-4 beat at 120 BPM so one two three four okay maybe I just want to have that a little bit little bit snappier there you go uh, let's put snare one uh, on two and four in this case five and thirteen okay so we've already got something to work with snare is a little bit soft in level so I'm just going to turn that up slightly so each instrument has got its own level control um, it's, it's just like on, a, on, on a good old-fashioned mixing board 
Okay, so now let's say that we wanted to enter a snare 2. I'm going to make that a little bit snappier. Now instead of entering snare 2 on the steps, I'm just going to enable record and push play and when I put the note in it's going to record it at that step. Okay. Okay, so I stop. Now you'll notice here that this one is in blue or purple to some people and these two are in red. That is because these pads are velocity sensitive. So what that means is I've hit that note hard and I've hit those two harder or standard step and accented step. So straight away this gives you a whole world of dynamics, um, you know, which is which is very important in any type of music because you don't want it to sound too repetitive or too robotic. Okay, so what have we done? Well, we entered steps on the kick drum just by pushing in the steps. We did the same on snare two. Snare three, we hit record and then actually recorded that in real time by hitting the pads. Um, there is another way to enter steps as well. So what I could do, if I was a good finger drummer, is I could enable record, hit play, and then go. But there's a much easier way. Um, by enabling record, playing through, and actually using this touch strip here. So I can enter the notes as quarter, eighths, or sixteenths, or even thirty-second notes, thirty-twos. Um, I'm going to do it as a, a mix between 8th and 16th now, and this is how it's done. So I've told it it's a breakdown between 8th and 16th, and I've just enabled record and switched between those two. So I've kind of got that now. Then if I wanted to accent a few of these hi-hats, because especially if you're doing um, double-handed patterns on the hi-hats, usually one hand is slightly heavier than the other in the player's playing. So we can just go and accent a few random notes. So, so you can hear yeah, that the, the hats are almost like talking to each other. Um, it, it just gives it a little more vibe and a little more bounce in the track, um, which is quite nice. However, we can also use the, uh, the touch strip to add individual timing breakdowns to a step. What does that mean? Well, if I solo the closed hi-hats, you can hear that each hi-hat hit is just one hit. Uh, but I can create a lot of movement, almost like a roll on there. Um, to you know, If you're listening to modern day R&B or trap music, you'll totally get what I'm about to show you. So I'm gonna um, hit that step while pushing down uh, something on the, uh, on the touch strip. So let's do that, uh, let's do that, and listen back. Okay, so that, that was the 16th and the 32 that I put down there, so uh, why don't we just go full on 32s, three in a row, and you'll hear, like, you know, it seems to be a thing in modern day music, is how many hat hits can you get in a four bar beat? Okay, unsolo that. And of course, the uh, rolling of a note can be applied to absolutely anything. Uh, you could do it on the kick drum if you wanted to, not that you necessarily would, um, but hey, if you want to do it, you could do a kick drum, you could add it to the cowbell, you could add it to um, you know, absolutely any of the individual instruments. Okay, so um, that was a quick demonstration of how to enter the notes. I'm just going to erase that pattern Let's go to 95 BPM, sort of like golden era hip hop tempo. Um, I did that just by turning the tempo knob. 
Uh, so if I wanted to do it at 94 BPM, or if someone came to me and they said, Brian, I'm making a track and it's at 94.2 BPM, I would firstly ask why. And secondly, I would say, no problem at all. My drum brake impact can do that. Um, and I think I do that by holding shift and then you can turn it into real increments. So that is now at 94.2 BPM. Uh, other way I could set the tempo is tap tempo. So one, two, three, four. Oh, how good was that? I tap tempoed that at 93 BPM. You can tell that I do play the drums. Um, so we're going to enter uh, a quick pattern. Uh, I'm just going to show you how easy this is. If you've never used the drum machine before and you're like, you know, I just use addictive drums or battery and the pads on my controller keyboard, totally fine. Let me just show you how quickly this is. So I've got my metronome that I switch on. I'll push play. Okay, it's got its own volume control as well. And then if I go into record mode, I'm just gonna put in some hits and we're gonna see what this sounds like. Okay, so if you've got a, a bass player in the room, they'll hear that beat, and then hopefully that will inspire them to come up with a uh, with a nice little line uh, over the top. Um, yeah, very very easy starting point. Um, there's if you want to do 144 BPM track, why not? Uh, I'm just going to erase that pattern, turn it up to 144. Uh, let's do a four to the floor. So one, two, three, four. Let's get some snares there and there. And let's. Uh, what should we do? Let's, let's let's put in the hats like that, and an open hat at the end. And why don't we also just put in a symbol over there? Okay. What does it sound like? Okay, cool. So if you're into uh, GABA, uh, you've pretty much halfway there got your track. Just put some sounds in there and uh, and you're ready to go. Okay, so what I really want to do though is just show almost the human nature of this machine um, by being able to shift notes a little bit left and right. Um, so really what I'm thinking is instead of having everything fully quantized all the time just to you know, be able to move things slightly ahead of the beat or perhaps behind the beat as well okay so let's create a clear pattern um, let's go back to well, let's make it 100 BPM metronome on So they're very, very easily uh, and quickly, we've got uh, a cool beat going on. Okay, that sounds very cool. Um, I don't think anyone, even the best drummers in the world, would play the hats exactly on the 16th note like that. And I'm, I'm not sure they really would because it just sounds a little bit too mechanical. So we can add a little bit of swing to that. Now I've got my hat channel selected and I want to add swing, not to the whole rhythm, but just to the hi-hat. So if I collect, select current track, which is this one, 
and then turn the swing up, you'll be able to hear the swing come into play. And then on the display, it shows you the amount of swing that you're adding. Um, if you don't know what swing is, it's sort of like if you imagine an egg rolling down the hill, it's going to do 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 instead of just roll constantly um, yeah, from one side to the other. Now, we've got a few hits here as well, so I'm just going to solo that snare. Okay, so you see what I did here. Um, th this is just you know, something naturally to me as a drummer, is that these are the accented notes and these are the ghost notes. So I played that in by going, uh, let's do that. So let's play that back. So you've got your dynamics that are going on there. This hit I want a little bit before the beat though because currently it's the kick and the snare are directly on the beat. So I can hold this one down and then turn this to the left slightly. I'll, let me do it quite a bit just for dramatic effect. So you can hear that that's coming in quite a bit before the beat. Uh, let's just take that to about 25 is usually good. You can still feel it, but it doesn't stand out too much. And then let's do the same with the other accented notes, but push that, uh, push that behind the beat. Okay, so this is quite an extreme demonstration. Uh, demonstration, but you've got. Uh, before the beats, you've got after the beat, and then you've got your hats that have a little bit of uh, swing on them. Uh, something else that you can do is the random function. So I'm going to enter a few notes uh, on the cowbell, just punch them in there, see what that sounds like. Okay, so after about four bars of that, it's just becoming too predictable. You know exactly where that hit is going to fall. So I use this on the cowbell, usually with the volume down a little bit, just to throw in uh, little bits of surprises here and there. So if I select current track, then turn up randomness, you're going to hear it's just going to throw in random cowbell notes. Okay, and if I wanted to add just uh, full on randomness on the whole mix overall, I can do that as well. And that's, that's usually cool to do it as like um, a bit of a drum fill at the, the end of a part. So if you're going from the verse to a chorus, just like right at the end of the, the verse, you can turn up the random and then you can turn that all the way down again. So um, <clears throat> quick overview, I would say just, just play around with it. Um, find your own style. There isn't really any right or wrong with this kind of thing. So uh, it's good just to um, to experiment, play around. Okay, I'm quickly going to talk about the um, transport section here. So, record, stop, play, which can also be uh, a pause as well. So, let's turn randomness down. Okay, so if I stop and then push play, it's going to play from step one. Okay. Um, if I push play, it's actually going to stop at that step and it'll continue playing from that step, like so. So that's quite useful if you've got your hardware synchronized well, with, um, w with some other hardware. So I've got this uh, set up here with uh, the micro brute. I've just got that clock out into clock in there. So if I wanted to stop and then dramatic pause, come back in, can totally do that with this and it's it, it's very quick and simple to do. Um, I'm going to talk about the metronome because 
it's kind of a very boring function, but it is incredibly useful. So I'm, I've got nothing playing. I'm just going to have my, my metronome, switch it on. Okay. You've got the volume control there. You've also got different uh, timing breakdowns. So this is as default set to quarter note. I can set that to uh, eighth note if I wanted to. So let's just change that in real time. In, uh, well, let's, turn, let's see if that works. Oh, sorry, I need to do that. Okay, select eighth notes and then eighth notes triplets. Sixteenth and sixteenth triplets if you want to do that for whatever reason. Um, the default is set to quarter notes. However, if you've got the click going out to a drummer, sometimes they prefer eight notes over sixteenth notes as well. Uh, with this, you can also set the um, the, the time signature, the, the timing breakdown of the steps by themselves. So you can have that play back in eighths, eighths and triplets, sixteenths, sixteenths triplets or thirty twos as well. And I'll, I'll show you that a bit later on when I've next entered the beat. So let's quickly put together um, another very, very quick beat. Um, <clears throat> and what I'll do here actually is so far I've only shown you how to get 16 steps. We've actually got 64 steps. Now, if you look at this thing, you say, well, it's only that big. If it was 64 steps, you would have to have one, two, three, four of these things next to each other, which, I mean, it would look kind of cool, but it wouldn't be that great to transport around or having a small studio um, apartment, studio like, like most of us have got. So if I wanted to, let's just create again, Let's do this 95 BPM, click on, enter a pattern. Okay, that's kind of, that's kind of cool. Um, I want to extend this to 64 steps, right? So you can see up here, 16, 32, 48, and 64. You can barely just see that at the top there. Now, I like this part. So I want that to be copied to all the other steps as well. I don't want to have to re-enter them. So if I just push shift and right, that has now copied everything to all 64 steps. Okay. Okay, so how do we do this then? You can see the first 16 playback. As soon as it gets to the next set of 16, it's not actually following it. Um, now we've done that for a very good reason, is that if you wanted to edit just this group while playing back, you can. It, it doesn't just follow and then flip onto the next one. Or if you did want to, push left arrow, right arrow together at the same time. And now if I push play, you see it goes over to 32. 48 and then 64 okay so I'm on 64 now uh, perhaps I just want to do two extra kicks there all right so let's enter in some hi-hats um, and possibly a snare too uh, what we've done here is just to again be able to have that movement almost like real-time finger drumming is you can record in quantized mode which will push it automatically to the nearest beat uh, same features in Cubase Logic Ableton and everything else or you can record it in real time so if you're slightly off the beat but you kind of want that you can do that as well so if I hit record now it's going to be in quantized recording. If I push shift and record, because there it is unquantized, shift record, then that's going to be in unquantized recording. Okay, so let's uh, record in, I said I wanted to do some hats and snare too. 
Uh, so let's go for it. Okay, and we can see that that's following the um, the all the all the steps that are happening there. Uh, so I'm just going to add in a few other things. I'm um, high tom, low tom, uh, FM drum, just to kind of vibe it up a little bit. I'm going to change that to 105 BPM. Okay, so it, I mean, it sort of sounds like a bunch of random sounds put together, but you can imagine if you put um, like a nice synth pattern over the top, or um, you know, some arpeggiated patterns, whatever. You got you got something pretty decent there. Um, then we've also got this um, touch strip, which you can use during the playback. You might have noticed that I did that a little bit earlier. So I'm going to just play it back, and this is going to slice it up into that time signature. So I'm just going to go over to some patterns that I've previously made. Um, I just want to show you a, a few other features. So erase, if I push erase, anything that can be erased is going to be flashing. So I could erase a whole song, a bank, a whole bank or a pattern. I just want to erase that pattern that I've made because uh, I've got other patterns that I've already made and I quite like them. So uh, let's just go through So I was just making my own bank the other day, um, working with a, like a down tempo trip hop artist, and um, they, you know, very good at pianos and keys, but not that good at making beats. So the way we bounced um, in the session was just making some beats and playing things over the top. Okay, so this has got something quite interesting that you can hear the kick, the first kick has got something very interesting going on. So I want to show that to you. Go to a empty pattern. Well, we've, got, we've got a step going on. There. Okay, so we've got nothing going on there. Uh, again, very quickly going to put in a beat. That's nice, but it's sort of constant. Uh, all my kick drums I've got accented, so I would like every other one to be a standard velocity. Okay, but now we've got the strip at the bottom here called color. So really what this does is give us four levels for each particular sound. So a sound can have standard velocity, it can have accented velocity, it can have standard color and then it can have color added onto that. So what does color actually do? I hear you ask. Well, I'm going to show you. I can add color to individual steps. So I'm going to put it on that one and I'm going to put it on that one. So when I play this back, you should be able to hear the drive. So it says in the color strip, that one has got drive. Solo that. So you can hear that these where I've added the color, I've got drive. So it's yeah, it's a bit louder. It's it's a bit more distorted. 
Um, why don't I add that to my snare? It's a color on that snare, and this one, it adds more body to the snare drum. So why don't we solo that? So it's almost like the snare drum has been tuned uh, a little bit higher. Uh, let's put this in on F FM drum. So if I go one, two, three, and then one, two, three, I want to add color to just to that one and that one. See, and that, that's a cool thing about playing around with a product like Drumbird Impact is that I literally just randomly entered those six notes at places I didn't know what it was going to sound like. And um, it actually sounds pretty good. So I might save that one afterwards and, and use that in a track. So what it's doing here, it's playing with the pitch envelope of the FM drum. Uh, each one, so snare two, let's bring a snare two. Right, I'm gonna solo snare two and then add color to that one, which turns it into more of a clap. Okay. So you can already hear that there's a lot of different, um, different sounds happening at the same time. And all I'm really using is kick, two snares, hats, and FM drum. You know, I can add that to, um, to quite a few other things. Um, so let's talk about the distortion as well. Um, I like the distortion because it takes you kind of from 80s analog drum machine all the way to instant nine inch nails. And let's just show you um, how to do that. So this is the on button. You've got the distortion in orange, and the round on button with the orange circle. So that obviously shows you distortion is on. And I'm gradually just gonna turn this up and you'll hear the effect that it's got. So you can hear the distortion working its way in. Um, what's a nice touch with this distortion as well is because it's all the channels really coming out through the master, so the distortion is affecting the master. Um, you can play around with the different levels, so if the kick is loud, it's gonna distort that the most because that's got a lot of low end. Um, if you bring the kick down, the hat's up, that's just gonna make it crunchier and um, yeah, you can have a lot of fun with that. Um, it's very difficult to make a distortion on a drum machine. Uh, something like a guitar does have its frequency range, which is quite broad, but not nearly as broad as a drum machine because you've got the extreme lows of the kick drum and then the highs of the snares and the hats. So to create a distortion that sits very nicely overall between those frequency ranges is, is difficult to do. Um, our product guys spent a long time seeing if it was something they could do, they knew they wanted to, but would it sound any good or not? And um, it's something that I use a lot, almost as like a filter, um, you know, instead of it being like pristine, clean analog drum sounds, uh, just to, you know, just to put it, you know, it's just on slightly to take a bit of the, um, a bit of the top and a bit of the bottom. And it's really cool when you're using it live. So if you, you've got your drum machine as sort of like a control surface, uh, and then you've got it hooked up to other analog gear, you could just bring up the distortion slightly over time. So it doesn't really change the dynamics very much. It just brings in that crunch. So if you can imagine like, you know, in a club when you're doing a set, you know, start off nice and clean and pretty, and then just, you know, dirty it up towards the end. You know, you wanna turn the Dalai Lama into a bad boy. Okay, so I just want to talk about the connectivity. So uh, you can see in this view here, I've got it connected to quite a few other things. Um, I've got it connected to the microbrute, uh, and I'm using the, let's see if I can lift it up very, very slightly, uh, the output. 
uh, into the input of this. So that I think that's the gate input and that's the clock output. So it's just clock and it's sending a signal. So when I when I'm pushing play on here, hopefully you can see by this green light that this is being triggered. And when I push stop, it's no longer being triggered. Um, I've got an arpeggiated pattern set on here. So if I'm pushing play, this is controlling this. It's telling, it's telling it when to start and stop. So I don't even have to look at the drum brute impact. I could just be playing around with the micro brute and then um, ready to go. It's got um, MIDI in and MIDI out as well. That is cool if you want to take something like, and I'm just going to reach over to get that. Um, this is the Alesis Strike Multipad. I'm just going to bring that into shot. Um, so the Strike Multipad is an incredibly powerful pad that does sample playback. Um, so it's got recorded samples on there and um, it, you know, You've got it next to your acoustic drum kit just to give it those analog sounds. You can just hit one of those pads. So I've got it set as MIDI out from that into MIDI in over here. And I can play any of the drum brute impact sounds by controlling it from there. Uh, you can do the same with V drums. The module's got a, a MIDI out on that. So you can have this kind of next to you uh, on the drum kit. Um, other things I want to show you which is real you know inspiring and when the the creativity starts to come in is um the individual outputs so you've got an output for the kick both snares hats and fm drum so the setup that i've got here and i don't think i'll have time to be able to um, go through any audio examples is i've got my outputs over here so i could just pop this in to um, into here which is then going into the eventide rows uh, I've got it on uh, uh, the pretty awesome like radio head sort of delay uh, sound and um, when I plug that in it's going to take the um, this well in this case it's plugged into the snare so I'm going to take the snare output and it's going into the eventide and then uh, it takes it out of the master output. So the reason that you want that is you don't really want like a, a wet dry mix. Uh, you just want that wet mix. And then in this case, instance, I've got it going through to the, um, the audio for studio. Um, so I've got currently my snares are going out into that. You could have a kick going into an external distortion pedal. You could have, um, you know the the hats going into like a, a flanger or compressor or something like that and um you really play around with that um it's got the metronome as well so as i showed you before with the different uh, settings um what you can do with a metronome is when you plug your headphones in it'll take the metronome out of the master mix why well, because if you're playing live, you don't want the audience to hear the metronome. You just want to be able to hear that yourself. So you put that in, metronome is taken out of the master mix and will come through um, just your headphones. Uh, something else on that note is if you've got a, um, if you are playing live, so, okay, let's very quickly just go to an empty pattern again. Let's put in some, Okay, let's, let's pretend I'm building this live. Uh, I've got 25,000 people in front of me and they're watching me build up a track in real time. Okay. Okay, so then I'm adding in different instruments. I've got a nice pad section going on. I've got an arpeggiator going on and um, it's all happening. When I'm playing back, I want to add in some FM drum or maybe I've got some FM drum already entered there. Okay, and I want to go back 
to maybe cowbell. So if I push cowbell, you're going to hear it. Okay, which means the audience has heard that. But let's say I want to jump from FM drum to cowbell without them hearing that. If I push shift on the instrument, it, it doesn't play it back. Um, you can just hide it from the audience. Uh, we've also got a uh, mute and solo section. So at the moment I've only got that soloed. Okay, but you can play around with different things and then you can have other things muted as well. So, so you can actually do like groupings between um, playing with the two, which is, which is quite interesting. Um, before I head over to the questions, I'm just going to show you quickly the song mode. So I've in my patterns, I've got uh, some some good stuff in bank four that I've made. I want to go to song mode. Okay. So what song mode allows you to do instead of having the same pattern for a whole song. So if you're um, if you're a singer songwriter. Uh, you want to have like you know the, the verse and then the pre-chorus and the chorus and it's not going to be the same beat the whole time you can actually just record um, you know your song mode in and you literally do that by hitting record and then you uh, you push the patterns where you want that to be so I want to have pattern uh, one going once and then pattern two going twice and then pattern three and then pattern four uh, so when you play it back, it's actually going to just, yeah, it shows you which pattern is playing right now. Okay, and then it goes over to the next one. Uh, last feature I'm going to talk about is, um, is going to be polyrhythm. Uh, and polyrhythm I am going to show you by using the cowbell. Okay, so let's put a step on the cowbell on step three. Uh, sorry, that was... Cowbell, so we've got cowbell. Uh, that's why. So the cowbell is going to be... Okay, so I've got 16 steps going on. Uh, every time the cowbell plays, I know where it's going to play. It's going to play on step three and on step five. Always going to be those two. But I want to like shift the timings of that. So while everything else is still playing in 4-4, four, four, I want this to be playing in a different time signature. So polyrhythm is in blue, shift is in blue. So if I push shift, polyrhythm, polyrhythm is now enabled. Okay. I want the last step, I don't want it to play through to 16, I want to play it only through to 5 and then repeat on itself. So if I push last step 5 and then push play, you'll see that this is playing to 5 and then repeating on itself while everything else is still playing through to step 16. Uh, did I do that? Last step there. Did I put polyrhythm on? Okay, very quickly. Erase pattern 13. Oh, I think that was why. So let's put. Anyways, that's how it works. Uh, so shift enable polyrhythm, go to your instrument, select the last step, and then that's going to be the last step that you're going to see. So we've got quite um, a lot of questions coming through. I hope this was a, um, a good overview for you. So you're not looking at the computer screen the whole time. Uh, you're just looking at this, playing around, add a bit of distortion. If you've got external gear, synths, effects, whatever, just you know, by all means, like I've got it set up here, just plug things in and see what happens. Um, the drum brute impact packs a lot of punch because it's got that, that full analog sound. So uh, the first question, does drum brute impact have more sounds than the original drum brute? Um, it doesn't have more sounds, but it's got very different sounds. I've got the drum brute right here next to me. Um, I've got both of them because I use them for different instances. Um, usually, if I want to get something together quickly that 
yeah, it's punchy straight away. I use the drum brute impact. I kind of find that it's got everything that I need. Um, when I'm working with a more experimental electronic artist or certainly hip hop artist, I hop over to the drum brute uh, because you've got two kick drums, you've got a zap, and you've got more outputs as well. So for the people who've got like guitar effects pedals laying around and you know other other bits of hardware like modules or synths. Um, the drum brute is really quick and easy to connect it to that. So drum brute impact doesn't have more sounds. It's got very, very different sounds. Um, it's kind of all ready to go out of the box. Drum brute impact is nice if you, if you've, if you want to play around and really experiment and create your own sounds by processing it. Um, and I think a lot of people are doing